there are more problems with gravity and also general relativity in particular. So uh, we need a new theory to describe uh, the phenomena that we're even observing. Gravity works well, and, and, but you should understand that has a lot of weight. It really works well. Unless we understand dark energy and, and the gravitational force associated with it, we, we can't predict whether our universe will blow up to bits, will crunch into a black hole type, or will just continue a smooth expansion forever. So why is a force that's so central to the universe and our science so elusive in its character? On my right, we have Eric Valinde, who's Utrecht theoretical physicist and string theorist. Um, on my left, uh, Frank Wilczek, theoretical physicist and Nobel laureate at MIT, and um, Laura Mersini Houghton, um, professor of physics at the University of North Carolina, and her work focuses on cosmology and the birth of universes from the multiverse. So, if I could, I think, Eric, would you, would you start and tell us why you think gravity is so elusive? Gravity exists, I mean, indeed, we can keep our feet on the ground and we sit in our chairs thanks to gravity. But what is it? I mean, is it the fundamental force uh, that we need to assume right from the beginning and then describe it? Or is uh, it possible to derive it without assuming it, I mean, derive it really from something underlying, from the microscopic? I'm saying, going to say the latter. Um, is our current theory of gravity, which is general relativity, is it really the correct theory? I mean, can we describe everything we can observe even with it? Uh, or is it only the problem with the Planck scale? I think there are more problems with gravity and also general relativity in particular. So uh, we need a new theory to describe uh, the phenomena that we're even observing, uh, in particular in cosmology. But let me start out by saying that general relativity is very successful and it's a beautiful theory and there are many things that have been tested. I mean, the gravity waves is certainly one of the recent uh, successes. But it doesn't mean that all uh, predictions that we that are made by general relativity are correct. And I want to mention a few that are uh, troublesome. Uh, first of all, I, I mentioned quantum mechanics, but also uh, there's a problem with the value of the vacuum energy, the cosmological constant, which also has to do with quantum mechanics. Uh, then there is uh, black holes. I mean, black holes uh, are, are uh, elusive objects where there are many puzzles in particular uh, about the information that goes in. And, and I think people are probably generally agree that we haven't really solved those uh, puzzles. But what for me actually even stands out is that there are even observations that are not in agreement with general relativity. If we look at galaxies, we see uh, that um, the way the, the, the stars are moving in galaxies cannot be explained by simply assuming general relativity. Uh, namely, the stars are moving much too fast. The only way we can explain it and save the theory is by assuming that there is an additional amount of matter that we have not observed yet, which we call dark matter. But this is a safe way of saving it, which is assuming that general relativity is correct. And the reason is that we don't see why it should be wrong. There is no conceptual reason why that should be the case. Now, that brings me to the puzzles of uh, black holes. I mean, if you think about black holes and the way they behave, they actually are, are teaching us, uh, they're actually laboratories for us. They are, they are uh, thought experiments which teach us that the equations of gravity look like those of uh, thermodynamics, uh, the, the laws that describe heat and temperature and so on. And those we know we can derive from something microscopic by treating statistically the microscopic molecules. Well, the same is true for gravity. The general relativity equations can be derived from something microscopic, and that's the kind of theory I'm working on, is precisely describing what is the analog of atoms of space-time that we have to assume. And there we go into the quantum phenomena of space-time, and there's a microscopic picture of space-time from which you can derive gravity. And then you can actually also explain the phenomena that we have are observing in uh, galaxies without even assuming the dark matter. Well, I think gravity is elusive because no convincing experimental evidence that gets beyond general relativity has been found, nor is there any prospect of any. Uh, 
The people who set out to detect gravitational waves started 50 years ago estimating what it would take to, esti to uh, uh, detect gravitational waves uh, from, for instance, black holes merging. Uh, and they estimated that they would be able have to set up some mirrors to detect rip uh, warping of space-time, which is what a gravitational wave is, that would be able to detect uh, uh, motions of these mirrors that are of the size of a thousandth of a uh, nucleus, thou thousandth of the size, not of an atom, but of an atomic nucleus, was a hundred thousand times smaller, uh, over a distance of four kilometers. So when the mirrors are four kilometers away, you have to detect that kind of uh, change. And by golly, they <laughs> took 50 years and surmounted difficulty after difficulty, and there it was. So that's a pretty impressive theory. Uh, it may need changes. There are <coughs> indications that the equations become singular in very, very extreme conditions, <coughs> like at the center of black holes, or in the extremely, extremely, extremely early moments of the Big Bang. Uh, but uh, it's easy to say gravity works well, and, but you should understand that has a lot of weight. It really works well under all kinds of circumstances. The people who believed in Newton's theory of the planets and Newton's theory of gravity uh, had an anomaly uh, much bigger than the anomaly of Mercury that was very troublesome in the early days. Uh, Namely, uh, the, the planet Uranus didn't seem to be moving the right way. And so Adams, John Couch Adams and uh, Le Verrier uh, uh, said that maybe there should be another planet that's a big planet that's having gravitational influences and causing this distortion of the Uranus's orbit. And they could calculate what it would take, where it would have to be, how big it would have to be, they told astronomers, look for that, and they found it. The uh, general relativity was so good to predict the orbit, the, these changes in the orb orbit of Mercury doesn't mean that uh, uh, it's... I'm not even sure what the interpretation... I mean, it doesn't mean that dark matter calls for another theory. It could very... Uh, I would argue, on the contrary, that there is... Uh, it's not just one observation that there's a deficit of mass in certain circumstances. There are many, many different kinds of observations in different circumstances, all of which are coherent with the possibility that there's a new kind of particle that makes this dark matter. I even think I know what the particle is, something called an axion. Uh, this great theory of general relativity... Uh, okay, so general relativity uh, undoubtedly is a, uh, has limitations, but another thing that I would point out is that it's a theory that's very simply formulated. The idea that you should uh, explain something simple in terms of something very complicated, I think, is a little wrong-headed. Moreover, uh, there are quantitative calculations that relate the strength of the electromagnetic weak and strong interactions uh, to the coupling, to the strength of gravity. Uh, quantitative relations that indicate that they all come together so they all can be treated on the same footing as fundamental forces. And I think uh, uh, I would need a lot of persuading to ignore that circumstantial evidence. Gravity, do I believe it's a fundamental force? Absolutely. And, and I, I think um, that the majority of, of the of physicists uh, do, do consider it to, to be a fundamental force. Uh, we have not succeeded so far in unifying it with the other three fundamental forces. It doesn't mean that a solution is, is not possible. Um, but the problem with gravity is that, first of all, in our daily experience, it's such a weak force that we really didn't need to bother with it until relatively recently in the, in the history of, of scientific endeavor. And um, the, the other difficulty we have since Einstein's theory came about in, in uh, the early 20th century uh, is the unification of gravity with the quantum theory. We don't have a theory of quantum gravity. There are two regimes where gravity is extremely important and is not the, the weak force that we can ignore or, or neglect in our experiments. And that is, um, at, at um, the, the moment, the universe goes under Big Bang inflation. Um, and 
uh, a similar system would be the, the collapse of a very massive star into one point. In both cases, if you follow general relativity to the dot, you end up with a singularity, which is a very exotic, mysterious object that quite likely is not physically there, is a mathematical solution, but, but not physically there. So in those two cases, it becomes imperative that, that we try to understand what, what uh, the force of gravity is, and, and uh, that, that motivates our effort in, into um, a theory of everything, a, a theory of quantum gravity, and so on.